Uh, welcome. We're excited about this session. The Oklahoma Senate has had a leadership meeting, a caucus meeting, got to sit and listen to the governor's state of the state. We were excited about his enthusiasm. I particularly was excited about cutting red tape and trying to find regulations to eliminate. And I have two of my good friends standing beside me, two of the leadership of the, of the Senate. I'm going to let them have a few comments and we'll open up for any questions you may have. Senator David, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Hey, I was especially excited um, to hear the governor talk about consolidation of agencies. Last year, we took uh, a lot of strides forward in giving the executive branch control of our state agencies and so that the executive branch could truly run government. And this kind of, kind of folds in with that in doing away with a lot of redundancy a lot of agencies doing the same work and yet never communicating with each other. I think it's really important that if we can do that consolidation, we'll get healthier outcomes, our roads will be better, and Oklahoma will save a lot of money doing it. With that, I'm going to turn this over to uh, the appropriation, Mr. Chairman. Roger Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's going to be with you today. Today may be the uh, first day of session, but certainly not the first day of working on our budget. I've uh, been working with Secretary Maisie. Our subcommittee chairs have been working throughout the, uh, the interim, uh, as well as with Chairman Wallace in the House, on our budget. And so you were able to receive today the, the governor's executive budget. Uh, that is what he'd like for us to be working on. We also have some priorities out of the Senate that we'll be working on. Most of that's going to deal with rural health care and uh, moving forward. And so I'm looking forward to a positive session. Uh, this year. I am thankful that our revenue is up and I think it's uh, as the governor brought out with oil and gas being down uh, where our revenue is still up. We talk about diversification. We have diversified our economy for that to take place. So I'm looking forward to uh, a good year. Just real, real quick, when he said the, the when you say revenue is up, that he was uh, talking about a 0.7 percent decrease. Is that the total budget? Where is the now, I think what we would have is we've got about seven tenths of one percent growth. You're going to see about nine million dollars more than what we had last year. However, you will see a lot of one times that we had last year that we do not have this year. And then also, we did not hit the trigger for the revenue stabilization fund where we automatically deposit 200 million last year. And so that will also be up for the legislature to take a look at. Overall, we have a very positive outlook. We want to build on the momentum we had last year. Look forward to working with Governor Stitt and Speaker McCall to continue to move the state forward. So we'll open it up to any questions you may have. Do you think bureaucracy is the biggest obstacle facing the state right now? I think it is an obstacle, yes. And we got we always have to make sure that we're modernizing the approach of delivery of services to our constituents. I'm excited to look at those. A lot of those have not been looked at in years. The administrative rules come before the House and the Senate if we're going to deny them. But we need to take an exhaustive look. Can you talk about, um, uh, the governor spoke to the gaming compacts issue um, and in terms of education funding, that roughly $130 million. Do you think that state legislators want to have a say in this gaming compacts issue, even if it's just that teeny little bit, you know, moving money around? I can't infer or guess what other legislators think. I can tell you that I've been clear that I'm trying to let the courts decide it. It's, it's an issue for a federal court. Hopefully they will solve it soon and we'll know. Uh, did, did they expire on January 1 or do they continue on? I look forward to having a conversation about the with the governor about the particulars of how do we handle that money, uh, but that's still in discussion. So it sounds like you'd rather the, wait until the court decides before taking any contingency plans. <laughs> I need to make sure that, that we're on the same page with the governor and the speaker. We're going to have those discussions this week, I'm sure. There's a if the money comes in and it's accepted, is that a tacit agreement that the compact move on? Uh, we have to have those discussions. Do you think it's a good idea to consolidate all these health agencies? Um, there's been some comment that it's created a nightmare for people trying to navigate one navigation. We're going to look at that. The, the governor uh, has laid out you know, a couple agencies that he would like to have under that and then has alluded to more. That's an ongoing discussion. If we can deliver services in a more efficient way where you don't have to go through five or six hoops, uh, that's great. But we'll judge it on its merits once we get it uh, to that point. Senator, Senator um, Leader Virgin called the governor's uh, pay for the funding plans a gimmick. She said if you want to fund education, fund education. 
Do you have any response to that? Well, I, I don't think it's a gimmick. $630 million new dollars over the last two years is not a gimmick. That is real leadership and real change. We're committed to education. The uh, Senate Republican Caucus stood before you all last year advocating for another $200 million in the classroom. We're still committed to classroom funding, and we look forward to seeing how we can best move education forward. But no, it is not a gimmick. $630 million has really changed uh, the game. I think, uh, I think the minority leader was referring to the only new money for education in uh, the governor's proposal today was $25 million for that uh, equal opportunity scholarship. And that's what she was referring to as gimmicky. Do you think that's the best use of increased funding for public education to put it into a scholarship for private schools? We're in day one of, of the second session of the 57 legislature. We have a long time to discuss how we can improve uh, public education. And uh, we're going to go from here, as Senator Thompson mentioned. We've been meeting all throughout the summer. Senator Pemberton, who leads the Subcommittee on Appropriations for Education, has been working hard to make sure that we can advance education. Again, this is day one, though. We look forward to those discussions. Do you see any room this session for increases to teacher pay and increases to state employee salaries? We have to look at the budget and make those decisions as we move forward. I, I would let Senator Thompson address that if you have any more to add to that. But right now, we're in the earliest stages of those negotiations. We've been working extremely hard with our House counterparts to have the meetings prior session and a bunch of meetings behind the scenes to try to figure out where we go, but we are nowhere close to be able to make a determination there, I don't believe. The only thing that I would add to that, those discussions have been going on uh, during the interim, and uh, whether it be with DOC, we noticed last year uh, during the interim uh, for DHS, they used some of their FTEs, able to give raises and, and go ahead and work forward. I think some other agencies may be looking at the same thing. Uh, we are committed uh, to make sure that our state employees are taken care of, that they're best we can. However, we just started today with that uh, discussion from the governor's budget point. Mr. Pro Tem, or Mr. Chairman, either, for either of you, um, this may be a little in the weeds or lost, but uh, former uh, Secretary of Budget Macy said, noted that in the budget proposal, it's a little different than past uh, governors. It, it listed a set of specific things he wanted, but at the end it said $163 million for essentially the legislature to kind of figure out. Do you, do you like that presentation? Is it more direct? Is it more honest than here's, you know, the grand scheme that, that we could do? Does that, does that make sense? You know, there's different styles. Some people like bolo ties. Some people like regular ties. Uh, <laughs> looks very nice on you. But you. The, the, I think it's just a matter of style. I am excited that this governor's budget has the totality of funding in it from local sources, from all state portion dollars. It gives a much clearer picture. About four or five years ago, the state senate started doing that in our appropriations bill under Chairman Jolly when I was his vice chair. I think it's extremely important when we're making decisions that we see the total picture. I'm excited about that part. As far as getting down into the details, I got the book delivered to me this morning, and I have not had a chance to analyze every page of it. Thank you. Senator, the governor is asking for uh, legislation to allow remaining cash balance between 19 funds. Environmental stabilization fund be leverage of PDP compensation for temporary bonds you know, class three gaming. Good idea. Bad idea. We're going to have to look at the details of that to see. Uh, the discussion started on that today. Uh, we look forward to hearing the governor's proposal and seeing what we need to do. At the end of the day, the Oklahoma State Senate is going to protect public education and make sure that funding is secure. You know, if I could add one thing to that, do you guys remember a few years back whenever oil and gas was really down and we had to come in and address the 1017 fund during that same time period? This is going to be a similar discussion. We have exclusivity fees on one discussion, we have education in another discussion. And uh, we have a, a record, and time's passed, I've taken a hard look at 1017, and so we want to make sure that we take care of education. Senator, uh, Departments of Mental Health and Corrections both asked for budget increases this year. Uh, governor's budget doesn't reflect those. Do you think we can keep making progress on reducing the prison population without uh, increasing budgets for those agencies? Again, this is just a starting point on the budget. I think the governor's looking for those agencies to justify any increases. We in the Oklahoma State Senate have been committed to criminal justice reform. That is unchanged. We will continue to make sure that we make Oklahoma better on criminal justice issues and continue our improvement. The governor's budget, again, I haven't had a chance to analyze every provision of it. One of the things we did in the reform last year was we were able to get uh, two appointments from the Pro Tem 
on those two boards that you referenced. So I have a much closer look at what are those agencies doing with those dollars. We invited those individuals to our caucus retreat this year and had a, a robust discussion. So I think we'll make a much more informed decision moving forward. I look forward to analyzing this budget request in more detail.